Fox ended their first half of the season with a last lap crash and drama at the Pikes Peak Roval last Saturday. Now it's NBC's turn, and it all starts back at Daytona for the Coke Zero 400. Weather here, you could not have asked for better weather this first Saturday in July, first half of the NBC and TNT races this year. And a lot of patriotism in the air tonight. And while we're here, let's go ahead and take a look at our starting lineup, which is populated by one, two, three Fords. Four of the five cars in the first three the six cars in the first three rows are all Fords, so look for them to be fairly fast tonight. Starting from row one, we have the Alliance Truck Parts Ford and the Duracell Ford. Starting tonight from row two, we have the Autotrader.com Ford and the Sun Energy One Chevrolet. Starting tonight from row number three, we have the Jimmy John's Freaky Fast Kickin' Ranch Chevrolet Ford and the Liberty University Chevrolet. Beginning tonight from row four, we have the Lowe's Chevrolet and the Interstate Batteries Toyota. Starting tonight from row five, we have the Nationwide Insurance Chevrolet and the number 10 car. Starting tonight from row six, we have the Procore Tools Chevrolet and the McDonald's Chevrolet. Starting tonight from row seven, we have the Performance Plus Motor Oil Ford and the Gear Wrench Chevrolet. Looking on from row eight, we have two Gibbs teammates, the 19 Stanley Toyota and the FedEx Express Toyota. While we look through the rest of the field, is there popping on on the bottom of your screen? Why don't we try to mic up Robert Smith tonight, who is the fastest of the Penske cars for Thursday night. Hey, Robert, this is Benny Parsons up in the NBC Sports booth. You got a copy? Yeah, I got you. What's up? Everybody's really pointing to Fords being fast tonight. Do you guys have a game plan here, with, especially with you know, it being 1-2-3 Penske, Penske? I guess right now just try to stay as close to each other as much as you can. There's really no set game plan because anything can happen with these restrictor plate races. I mean... We could all be up front and dominate. They can go single file. They, we can spread into multiple packs. Or there could be a bunch of crashes like there seems to be the past few years. We've ran these restrictor plate races, especially at, after Talladega. Obviously, that big rack in the spring that took out so many cars early. So our goal right now, stay as close as we can. I know the four is fast. He's going to be pushing a lot of us tonight. I know he's going to be pushing my teammate in the 12. He's going to work with us whenever he can, and obviously his teammates as well, kind of scattered throughout the field. So the goal, probably the big goal here is just stay away from the trouble, and hopefully we're out front and preferably in one piece. Thank you for your time. Have a good one down there. All right, so – Tonight's race menu presented by Coke Zero will be 10 laps, 34 cars, big packs, 30, you know, 10, 12 rows deep. There could be like the likelihood for a big wreck will probably increase quite a bit as the night goes on, especially towards the end of the race, even though we had in February we had a big one. And the problem is, these guys run so aggressive, and as the race goes, you're going to see these kinds of wrecks and these kinds of this kind of racing just up the ante. And the problem is, some of these wrecks can be bad. I mean, the 12 spun in February and ended up flipping on the apron in the midst of, of a big wreck there. So there's got to be that line you have to watch towards watch here as well. Pace car is off. Penske teammates on the front row. Robert Smith, Menards Cup Series. The Camaro coming down pit road. We're underway, and NBC will take you all the way to the championship in Atlanta. And we're green rolling. Three wide, three wide, two. All right, still there. Bottom. 
Bottoms, everybody's still side by side. Clear. 48 pushing. 48, watch the 48 here. Be careful. Um, still there. All right, the 9 came down. 9 came, came down. 9 came down. Outside line's got a huge push from the 18. Outside line with a big push. Big push. Big push. All right, clear high. Clear high. Clear high, kid. Clear high. Stay low. Low, low. All right, now low, 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 low. Three wide, three wide. I towards the middle. Wow, already we're seeing a little bit of three wide racing. The 21 got pin cushioned all the way to the back of the field on the start. Wonder what happened there. He got wicked loose coming off four. Luckily, he's kind of settling around where the 41 is in the second part of the group. But up front, you saw this. You really saw this kind of orchestrate towards Penske's favor. Zarek's Moon got pushed out front. And right now, I think the three Penske cars are going to do everything they can to kind of control this race. As three wide kind of starting to develop toward the middle and back of this first group. With the 21 kind of using that little slip up to gather up in the back. He dropped all the way back to 27th as up front. You're seeing a little bit, seeing everybody's calm, collected right now. There, it's not a lot of pushing on the outside, not a lot of momentum right here. And let's go on board with one of these, with the uh, 88. Right now, the it really depends with these restrictor plate races. You're going to see a lot of these cars really kind of lock push, push quite a bit in the corners. But the problem is you can't push too hard, otherwise you're going to send the car sideways and it's going to be a wreck. So far, everything seems to be organized. The bottom line has stalled out, or the far, far top line, which is currently. You see the top line right here led by the three of Jonathan Morrison. This is kind of a homecoming for him since he is a Florida native. He, the line's kind of stopped out here towards the back, but up front at his line. So his line really needs a lot more cars. But the thing is, nobody wants to drop back and risk losing all that time. Is Hunter Miller with a whale of a push? To the front. In one is the two. He drops down in front of his two teammates. Jacob Tube suddenly decides to change lines on the top side. And now that line's really dropping back. And the 42 with a nice move to the outside. Does it work? See, there's a pack of 10 and a pack of the lead group. Currently, as it stands, is 24 cars deep. And most of it's just two, two wide racing with a couple instances of three wide as the 42 continues to drop back. As you look towards the front, Hunter Miller, seems like he's seems like he's really... Kind of putting on a bit of an interesting strategy here. He's interesting. Kind of an interesting move. And he's got the Toyota, but he's got five Chevrolets behind him. So that's the only reason he's able to hang with the two right now. It's because he's got a bunch of like manufacturers behind him. He's obviously got the Toyota of Joshua Leanbatch, who right now is in a hornet's nest in no man's land. The closest Toyota is all the way in the bottom lane right now behind Caleb Hoffman as we go back to him. And the pack of 10 coming through the tribals. Oh, there. Oh, we got trouble. Big wreck. A couple of them. Brendan Little into 16 gets pounded right here on the top side. Ed coming off four. 
out of 15. And so far it looks like it's only those two and the caution comes out. Oh, M15 still got, got some speed here. Oh. He's still hitting that wall. A big, big hit right there by the six from the 16 of Brendan Little. Looked like he got pushed way too hard by the 55 of uh, What If Racing. Him in the 83. Matthew Powell actually com is coming back to the eighth to the 83. Anyways, the caution has come out, and the 16. What if Racing was trying to push the 16 right here and just got him loose? Hit the 21. 21 is the other car. That's Xavier Sadrasco. He started towards the middle of this group. He got pushed way back. Big story here. That's the 15 of Darnell Matthew, who uh, came in there full speed and absolutely nailed that 16. See, he was coming up. And he's sitting right there on the outside wall. Right now, Brendan Little has gotten out out of his car. Darnell Matthew has gotten out of his machine. He is currently standing right next to the outside I'd wall, just trying to get his breath back. That was a whale of a shot that those car that he took, and the fact that he rode to they basically flew through the grass and it did slow him down. Don't get me wrong, because otherwise that would have been a, a lot worse. But a lot of damage early here in the three-car incident here at Daytona. The 16 gets turned in the second group. And this is also what we talked about yesterday in last night's bush race. It doesn't matter where you hide. You can be towards the front. You can be towards the middle. You can be all the way at the back and still get caught in a crash. Let's see the 21. Down a pit road. Any repairs? He's got the side of his car all caved in. So this race has just had its first crash of the night. As we get racked, re-racked up for another restart. Robert Smith is still your leader, and there's still the four Fords on the bottom. Everything seems to be unchanged right now in the top 10. Nate Sherman, the 48, still on that windless streak. He's kind of been kicked around a little bit. That's the only th other thing to note. We're back under green. Ooh, he caught him sleeping. And Blake Dillon. Trying to go to the top, he's Dylan Murway just came across two lanes of traffic to get to the 10. And they might go to the front here. Not if Hunter Miller can do something. Whoa, that was just deadly. And they're already beginning to fan out and make their moves. They're already three wide, multiple rows deep. There's about six, almost seven rows for a moment, but the 43 is currently sitting in the middle, middle of this group. There's Blake Dillon still getting a wicked shove from the four. As now the rows go to six, now seven. 
and basically everybody at this point. And Xavier Sadreska continuing to drop back. He's got a problem. Something's happened. We're in the wall, guys. Car is done. That's towards the back. But up front, look at this. Robert Smith coming back. Well, the wicked shot there. He's getting a push from his teammate, the 22. Whoa. And around goes the nine. Jacob Tube slides through the bottom of the racetrack. So far, it's another single car incident, but the caution comes out. All right, yellow's out. Yellow's out here. The 21 has got a lot of damage. He popped a tire. Luckily, he's he came down pit road. Looks like his night is done. Sarah Chodreska has got a lot of damage. Hit a lot of smoke. So, curious to see what happened to him. Is it a stack up? Curious. It like, looked like there was a stack up towards the back of the pack. Right there, and could that be what led to it? And then the nine just misjudged a block because he, he saw the line. He didn't really anticipate the 95 being down there. And then wicked slot under Jacob, too. He was a two time winner. He seemed like he was getting hot in the middle of the summer. He won uh, Pocono a couple weeks ago. That race was delayed to Monday. A lot of races been affected by rain the past few weeks. Obviously, Pocono is one of them. The other one, Michigan, was delayed nearly four hours. But amazingly, that race got completed with like an inch of daylight left on Sunday. Believe it or not. And Pocono was just delayed to Monday in a pretty sun-soaked day in the Long Pond region. And Jacob Tube won Pikes Peak, so for his efforts to go three in a row wild hampered, but it's not his efforts are not done. Not like you know, track like say Kansas or Or somebody. Kansas or Indy in a couple weeks or even um, some of our even the road course at Portland. Which will be coming up in a couple weeks on TNT. First time the TNT broadcast will be in full swing. So also in, part of that stack up that we were talking about. The 43 just didn't get going. And amazingly, I thought we were going to have another crash right there. The 55 and 31 all got hit. 31 and obviously the 21 definitely suffered the worst end of that. So they're going to be pitting. So Jacob Tube will have to restart all the way back in 29th. While we restart at the middle midpoint of the race. Here is definitely where you're going to see the blocks get really, really aggressive. Here we go. Another great restart by, with the two pushing the 24. And the two's holding the brakes. A lot of people are. And Jacob Tube says, I'm going to go for it. Hunter Miller says, I'm going to go for this because I can. Three wide. Does he have help? But then again, not really, but neither does the two. That was a smart move because you saw the two is definitely clogging up the, la the lanes. He didn't want to risk getting caught in the middle of an accident 
or triggering an accident, especially these cars going slow speed. I mean, anytime you have the concern of a big one, you always want to know, know where they're going to go. 24 drops back to the 12 on the back stretch as we look onto our NBC Skycam, which is similar to something you'd see on a highway during a police chase. And wow. All I can say is this got really interesting. Zoic's moon jumps down, and they're really itching to wreck, wreck towards the middle of this pack as they're really kind of starting to fan out. There's a lot more pushing being done. There's, oh, we got an, another one coming through the trial. Oh, what if racing into the wall? Into the wall. Several other cars trying to take evasive action. It is oh, we got one airborne. All right, come on, turn left, turn left, turn left, turn left, turn left, turn left. The wreck's still going on down here as Joseph Lombard gets clipped. If trying to miss. Caution's out, caution's out here. Wow. Another weird crash. I mean, it seems like these crashes just keep popping up at random times. Not a lot of damage to the 43. Well, if you're counting the back end of the car, and the 9 probably flat spotted added some tires to slow down. The 56 of Jessica Shelton got kicked up down to the apron. You see the damage on the 43. All of it's on the back end, it looks like. And then DJ Harris, though, he took a he basically slid, caused a big stack up, sent. A bunch of cars spinning. There's the 25 of Spalding getting hit. And w wow. The 9 just basically was an inch away from getting really torn up in that. And then here's what if racing with a big shot. Oh my goodness. He Luckily that was the new area that was put down there. And the 33 was already sliding. Then Jacob Tube definitely had a bit of a ride. Jessica Shelton was already down there. She gets back up. Then I, oh my God, a lot of near misses. And then the 43 comes down. Whoa. A lot of crazy near misses in this one. But another two more cars are down. As things continue to heat up. So we're down to 29 that are running. And we'd like to remind you next week we'll be out, out to Kansas. The second race on NBC. The weekend will begin at 3 Eastern with live cup qualifying from Kansas. Presented by FedEx at 3 on TNT. And then Saturday will be happy hour on TNT as well. The happy hour at not practice 2 at not at 10 a.m. And then practice 3 at 1 p.m. And then Sunday. Coverage begins at 12 Eastern with the countdown to green Served by Sonic. And then at 12.30 Eastern will be live flag-to-flag -flag coverage of the Hollywood Casino 400 from Kansas on NBC. 1.5-mile racetrack. Fun, fun race. And there's, I don't know if you heard next year, but Kansas's date is going to be moved to Saturday night next year. That's nice.
nice to see there. Let's see another race getting a primetime schedule. Seen a lot of primetime thrillers tonight. What if racing taking a bit of a shot? He Right there. There and uh, so five, so four to go when we get the green. Zoex Moon on the front row. So far, it's been a Penske show here at Daytona. And uh, <laughs> you think these blocks were getting crazier and crazier and they seem to be ramping up the aggressive pushing. Wait till you see this. Two teammates on the outside. Zorix Moon on the inside. Here we go. Dylan Murray staying right to the back of the 10, going into one. He's on him. On him, all right. And he's there, and he's gone. Wow, what a push by Dylan Murray to get his teammate to the point. Now all they got to do is hold on. But keep in mind, Zark's mood could block and make some crazy moves as well. So now they got two cars to deal with. Don't get them lined. Right now, Blake Dillon's just praying, please don't get lined up. And how about this? Nate Sherman with a nice push from the 83, driven by Matthew Powell this week. He's got the 11 to 17 behind him. And what about Jacob Tube? He's been nearly a part of a couple crashes already he's being pushed on the top upside here oh boy still there still there still there zoex moon trying to block doing every whoa that was almost big she's dropping back zoex moon almost got turned in front of the entire pack there Everybody behind still hanging tough. Coming towards the middle. Oh, there it is. It's the big one. Zark Hunter Miller hard into the outside wall, and he's collecting a bunch of them. Oh, they're still wadding him up here. All right, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on up, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on through, come on through, come on through. Oh, still some major shots here in three. Look at this. The 18's in it. And you might as well say the whole whole neighborhood is in it here. KFC Cup Series, Hunter Miller, WB Network involved. And the whole whole rest of the field, it seems like. All right, just get woe down. Just get woe down. Just get woe down. Woe down. Woe down. Woe down. Woe down. We knew this this was going to be the concern coming into this race. You know, the more and more aggressive these guys get, you know, pushing them three, four wide. You know, with three to go, with two to go here at Daytona, a massive crash has taken multiple people out. And this started way back in this group. 
think some of these guys were just coming out of two. Let's look at it again. And we had several guys come into this crash toward the end. I don't know what how much damage they got, but <laughs> some of them did get banged up pretty good. They're going towards the uh, middle, 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 middle here. Wow. So, and here we are. Basically, the whole pack just flew apart in one, one hit. So, here's how this happened. So, Zox Moon... She was on the bottom. They're coming out of two. She gets tipped way wide. I'd right here. There's someone. Trying to figure out where everybody's at. She gets nearly gets put into the wall. We nearly have a crash right there. Dylan Murray is pushing Blake Dylan and then. And here it is. 24 gets turned. And then there is just minimal time to react in these in these situations. Look at the 88 fly by this accident. The 42 got in it. The 11 got a 48. This basically just turned into a minesweeper coming into three. The I mean, that's the problem. You typically see these crashes towards the middle of the backstretch entrance to three, but you had one in turn two, and this basically cleaned out a solid handful of cars. I only saw about 10 of them. That escaped. So while this was all going on, they were just wadding them all up. And whoa, how the 41, you got hit hard by the 78. And then luckily he was about an inch away from going over in that incident. And then the neighborhood basically imploded behind. I don't think the 88 didn't seem like he got much damage in this, this accident. There's only 10 of these, 10, maybe 11 of these guys that escaped this wreck unharmed without any damage. The 6, the 48 escaped minimal damage. Like he got clipped. I don't think he got too, anything too major from the looks of it. But wow. Just this. This was a wall. The 88 is down on pit road. He's He got hit. I think he's just there to clean out s some grass and probably get some cars, go cars going. But some of these other guys took some wicked, wicked hits. The 24 basically got turned in front of the field, and it just clogged everyone. Look at that. So right now we're trying to figure out who is where. Derek Lewis escaped with minimal damage as well. Um, 
upon further inspection, a little bit of quite a bit of nose damage to the 48. Amazingly, he's still running. Um, so right now we're just trying to do a car count, trying to figure out how many people are left and running at the end of the end of this race. And I mean, wow. The nine and the 17 though, they came by up top as everyone was crashing down low. And amazingly the 41, when he got jacked up by the 78, didn't flip. The 88 and 42, we know over continuing. The 24 is done. He got turned essentially right in front of the field. And then basically had a whole host of cars come right at him. The 18, the 95, the 41, the 19, 12. So right now we're trying to piece out who is left. So right now we have... Had 10 cars escape with minimal damage, uh, 11 if you count the 48. So 10 escape with none. And right now, wow, just all these cars in one big group. Look at that. There are 29 that started after the race's crashes. Five are out of the race from earlier wrecks. And right now there's... 29 cars on the track right now. 19 of them are in this. 19. So right now we're getting word that some of these cars are able to continue. Um, amazingly, the 41 was not, didn't even roll over in that crash. He came really close to. So right now the 41 is done. The 42 got woed up and I think he stopped. So. We're up to down to 18 now. He he stopped. He got flat spotted tires. So right now, 48, 88 are continuing. The 19, the 18, the 95. Uh, looks like maybe the the three and the one are continuing as well. That's confirmed. But the rest of them, <laughs> yeah, they're done. The rest of these cars are pretty much all torn up. And look at. That crash caught up all three Penske cars. And remember how you're talking to Pierce, you can't rely too much on a plan because something like this will happen and just totally throw your plan out the window. So as we figure out the cars that are left, so we're down to 29. And some of the other cars that were in those wrecks They could get a really good point stay out of this if this holds out. So let's look at the tickets to the playoffs, the run of the playoffs next week. A lot of these races are going to be on NBC. Obviously, Kansas, you know, 12 Eastern, Indy at 2 Eastern, then Richmond, the final Saturday in July. It's going to be up there. Um, then Portland's going to be on TNT, then Michigan, Sebring, then the Friday Night Classic at, at Bristol. That race is always fun to watch. That race begins at 6, 8.30 on TNT. Um, then we end... We begin September at Darlington, then we end the run of the regular season with, obviously, the Always exciting night race in California, 8 Eastern on NBC. So only two races in the run of the playoffs are going to be on TNT. Montreal at 2, the new ro the road course out in Canada. For the playoffs, that's going to be on NBC. And 
then the night race at Brighton and the playoffs. That's going to be at all at eight Eastern on TNT. Then race out at Dover. Going to be at an early time. So consider that breakfast for the round of twelve. Um, that's going to be at eleven a.m. Eastern on TNT. And then Talladega one Eastern on NBC. Charlotte seven Eastern on NBC. Bowman Gray at twelve Eastern on NBC. NBC. Then the race out at Texas at 8 Eastern on TNT. And then Saturday night this year, the Cup guys are going to be heading out to ISM for the middle race in the round of eight. And they're going to be running the new configuration where the dog leg is going to be the start finish line. That's going to, you thought the old Phoenix was aggressive? Oh my God, you ain't seen nothing yet. And then the race out at North Carolina going to be at 12 Eastern on NBC. And then Atlanta be a two hour pre race beginning at 1 Eastern on NBC. And then the race will probably begin about 3 o'clock Eastern on NBC. So we've got a lot of races coming up on network television on NBC that's coming up that you can tune into. But we got to get through this overtime restart here at Daytona tonight with a Big sweeping crash that caught up a lot of people. So only that we know of only one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, three. Only nine cars escaped have escaped Rex tonight. Well, eight. The twenty the nine got sent for a wicked slide. And he's in contention to win this thing. Again, if the leader does not make it to the white without, and there's a wreck, we'll do it again as many times as necessary. If the leader does make it to the white and there's a crash, the race is over, whether it be caution or checkers. But if the wreck is small and cars can drive away, then we're fine. Overtime here at Daytona. Can Blake Dillon pull off his first career IHOP Cup Series victory? We'll figure it out. Two laps here at Daytona. Dylan got a great launch right there. Didn't even need the 17 to push him. He got a wicked, wicked jaunt. And he comes down in front of his teammate. See the cars at the back starting to work together. At least trying to. Caleb Hoffman with a nice push on the top side. Caleb Hoffman ran out of fuel in the 500, the Daytona 500 back in February, got caught in May wreck on the last lap, hoping to just make up what he can to salvage a good day here at Daytona, here at good night here at Daytona. Here we go, through three and four. Oh, they're stacking up. They're stacking. Oh, we got a wreck. And there they go. Another crash here in three and four. And this will probably do it. We got more people piling up. We will have another restart. Hold the brakes, hold the brakes, hold the brakes, hold the, hold the fucking brakes. We did not make it to the white flag, which means we're going to be going again. Caleb Hoffman, one of the cars, and then... You knew this was going to happen. Just Blake Dillon tried to side draft and then. And um, everything just fell apart. And the field gets thinner. 
Caleb Hoffman coming to rest on the outside wall here in the travel. When Onet is down. And wow. So we, we're going to have another crash. The 17 was trying to get by the 10. And the 10 gets wrapped up in it. And then the 43 gets. Caught up. The 18 almost got in it as well. He didn't even see some of these guys. Look at that. While they were crashing up top, 43 was all the way back to the 1, to the 9 of uh, Hoff, of the 19 in Caleb Hoffman's number. And then cars just start wrecking, sliding down. I think they're, they're going to start wadding up more. <laughs> You think we're done wrecking yet? Please, I don't think we haven't gotten started. Overtime take two here at Daytona. This time, can the leader make it to the white without a crash? Because this is the fifth caution of the race. We have an update from Jacob Tube saying he may have cracked the nose when he hit Hit the 10 to basically tip him up the track. He is taking his car down pit road. He is currently at the back in 10th. I'll tell you what, it's been there and back with this with the 9 car. There and freaking back. Overtime, take number two. Derek Lewis. A nice push this time. He's able to keep strong. Can we make it to the white this time without a crash? How about this? Joshua Leanbatch, look at that bandaged 18 car. He was well ahead of the, He was in the middle of the big one a couple of cautions ago. Now he's in contention to win it. He's there up top trying to get a push. Oh, contact towards the front, 42 and 88. Whoa, how did we not wreck? How did we not wreck? Dylan Merway trying to escape the chaos. He has been the restrictor plate master so far this year, looking to master the chaos. They are three wide behind the leaders. And he's looking to take care of him. I don't know. If they can get lined up, they could possibly make a run with the white flag. White flag is out here at Daytona. They're crashing again. Josh Willenbach turned around. One car up in the nose of Noah Spalding's car comes flying off in the catch fence. Just past the start finish line. Caution has just come out. Oh no. And a big, big crash to end this race. Oh, wow. Whoa down, whoa down here. It's this is bad. Dylan Murway has won tonight's race here at Daytona, but this does not look good. The 25 in the middle of this big pack was tipped into the catch fence. That front end is gone. He's he came to rest upside down. 
Jessica Shelton in there. Joshua Lean match backed up to check on him. Right now they're stopped telling all the drivers to stop. This crash is just so huge. I mean, in terms of debris everywhere. Nate Sherman is through. And Zachary Lombard in the 95 coming to rest in the apron area. All that space down in one. The one of Alcev, Grayson Alcevdo, Leah Jonathan Morrison. Morrison was on fire earlier. Now he's out. But that, this was ugly. Right here. I'm, I'm more worried about the fans. Noah Spalding is in the car. And the, all the crews are out there. They're trying to do everything they can. So as of right now, they're going to tell all the drivers to basically pull, pull to a stop at the entrance of pit lane, all uh, seven of them. And that were involved in some of the races, crash ashes, and wow. There are, so right now, Dylan Murray has won this race. We'll uh, step away here and uh, be back here in a moment. You're on NBC. Back here at Daytona, the Coke Zero 400. Those of you who are uh, tuning in, we will put a side-by-side -side screen so you guys can catch late local news. There will be a crawl on the bottom if anybody wanted to watch their late local news. Um, we will be going side-by-side -side right now. That was just ugly that 25 car got as soon as that 25 car got tipped and hung a wicked right and then that car rode along the catch fence rode on on, on the safer barrier here with a 56 right under it That car is sheer. That whole front end is just sheared away. And then Noah Spalding came down. We are hearing reports Snow Spalding is okay. They have flipped the car over. So that kind of eliminates any worries there. Joshua Leanbach slid and stopped short of hitting the pit wall in the 18. Right now, all the drivers are fine. Um, right now, I understand NBC local news will be uh, covering this, I'm sure. So we'll go ahead and take you out to uh, Tom Brokov for any updates as we can. And also, you can also tune to NBCSN for any updates as we have anything from the fans here at the track. There will be a crawl on the bottom of the screen. That will uh, update you with any news and information as soon as it becomes available to us. So, just to recap, Dylan Merway has won on tonight Daytona, his fourth win of the year. Sorry, third win, but a massive, massive, ugly, ugly crash. And I don't even think those do enough words do enough to describe Ivan. So far. They have sent medical guys, staff to this front stretch stand where parts of that car came through and just shredded that fence. And uh, really, r really ugly end to what was a pretty fantastic race. There, I mean, there's got to be some kind of a line that you draw. I mean, Doing some of the blocks and some of the crazy pushes that early. I mean, 21 got pushed to the back for no reason because he nearly spun off four and crashed on lap one because some it, somebody was pushing too hard. Some of the other blocks, I mean, the nine, everybody was guilty of it somehow, and obviously including that 19-car mess late in the race. Just 
Wow. That's all I'm going to tell you, including some of the other crashes. So coming across on uh, your top of your screen will be your, your results from tonight's race here in Daytona. And you can screenshot where your driver finishes on the screen. Next week at noon will be Kansas Speedway for the countdown to green surf by Sonic. And then 12, then at 1230 will be coverage of the Hollywood Casino 400 from Kansas. If there's any news updates from the fans, um, actually getting something right now. If there's any updates from the fans here from our NBC News, they're supposedly everybody's on their way. Uh, any updates from there, we will uh, pass those along to you. Noah Spalding amazingly got out of that car under his own power and basically lost the front of his car in that wreck. Going to the white flag, second time in a row that we've had a race here at Daytona or Talladega end under caution, second time this year. Uh, the race in February, at least, was able to race. We were able to race back because of a two-car accident. But if there's any up again, if there's any updates, we'll pass those to you. Congratulations to Dylan Murway for his win tonight at Daytona. We'll see you next week at Kansas on NBC. Coming up next on the East Coast will be your late local news, followed by thirty rock, followed by back to back episodes of Thirty Rock. If you're out west, will be um, NBC's Saturday movie night preview. Supposedly they were showing Shrek earlier, and they're going to show it again. 